What if I told you that you don't need that fancy new PC to boost your FPS in Valorant? Instead, what if all you had to do was follow along with the steps that I'm about to show you in this video here, especially the in-game video ones? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with a few short things you can do inside of Windows to set yourself up for better performance. First things first, type in graphic settings into your Windows search bar. When you're here, you're going to see the similar screen. First things first, make sure to turn off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. For most systems that I've seen, it's best to disable this option as it introduces stuttering in a lot of games. I would still recommend to test this out yourself with it being on or off, but if you want my advice, keep it off, it's simple. Next up, you're going to want to locate where your Valorant program is. Find the program file that you used to launch the game. It could be in a variety of places, but if you're struggling, you just head to the drive you installed Valorant on and locate the folder, then find the Valorant launch program. Right click, go to properties, click on compatibility, and make sure that you've ticked disable full screen optimizations. Another thing that's really important to know as well is when you're on Windows, make sure that you don't have YouTube videos or other media playing in the background or on additional monitors. These can sometimes introduce very minor stuttering and generally just slightly lower performance, but they aren't the end of the world if you do watch stuff on the background. It also goes the same for Wallpaper Engine and other similar programs. Make sure they're disabled or not running while you're playing Valorant. Finally, the last Windows change you want to look at will be inside of NVIDIA Control Panel. Inside the control panel is where you have a little bit of a choice to decide whether you're a G-Sync player or not, and I'll explain both as we go along through the rest of the guide. Firstly, let's get you following all these 3D settings. Make sure that you have it set on, use the advanced 3D image settings so that you can go and change things yourself, and come in here and you're going to want to copy all of these settings, except a couple that we're going to go over ourselves. But follow along, you can pause the video wherever you like it, just make sure that you change all of them to the ones I have set right now. If you don't have some of those settings, don't worry about it. Anyway, so the ones that we're going to look at that are going to be specific to whether you're a G-Sync player or not are these ones here. Firstly, you can have V-Sync off for pretty much 99% of the time. If you're someone that wants to do the full sweaty G-Sync route, then turn this on and we'll go over some more details that you need to change as well. But if you're like me that you don't really want to go the full route, but you also have G-Sync on, keep it off. It'll lower input lag. The next thing to talk about is max frame rate and frame rate capping. When you're using G-Sync these days, you're supposed to cap it a little bit under your monitor's refresh rate. So for me, for example, I have a 280Hz monitor, so I cap it at 276fps. If you're a G-Sync user, this is probably what you're already doing anyway, and you already know this. If not, you should set it to this, and also maybe use V-Sync on if you feel like it. I personally like to use it off, though. And if you don't use V-Sync, or you don't know what V-Sync is, or you don't have it, completely ignore this, doesn't matter. Just copy the settings and ignore the max frame rate cap and ignore V-Sync. While we're here as well, make sure that you've got your monitor set to the right settings. Make sure you're on your highest refresh rate. Make sure that you're in the resolution that you have on your monitor. It could be in 4K, 1440p, 1080p, whatever it may be. Make sure that it's set to that. And also while we're here as well, you can adjust desktop color settings and change your digital vibrance to somewhere between 75 to 100%. Personally, I like it around 80%-ish. It's up to you what you have like preference-wise. But in-game, it'll make colors pop a lot more and the game will be a little bit more better visibly. So we're in game now and the first thing we want to take a look at inside of our settings is in the general tab and that is enemy highlight color and we are going to use yellow deuteranopia. It's the colorblind setting that basically changes the model outline to be yellow instead of the default red. It helps a lot with visibility and especially in games like Valorant with fast movement you respond a lot faster to the color yellow. Switching on over now to the video tab is where the main magic is going to happen. So I have it in windowed full screen right now, but you should really be playing in full screen at all times to have the lowest possible input lag. Make sure that limit FPS always is turned off. You do not want this checked on, even if you're a G-Sync user or if you're not a G-Sync user, keep this off. Anything that we do with frame rate capping is all done through NVIDIA or something else anyway, not in game. If you have a more recent NVIDIA GPU, then the chances are that you're going to have reflex available to you. And what I would initially recommend is to try the on setting. It is generally best if you use G-Sync. If you don't use G-Sync, best just to keep input lag down. And if you use this instead of on and boost, you'll notice that you will have less stuttering. On and boost does introduce a little bit of stuttering just because it is maxing out your graphics card. It does often have those little dips in performance that can cause little micro stutters. But I would suggest trying out with off as well and just seeing how you feel. But I think on is the sweet spot. Now my graphics quality settings do change a little bit, so bear that in mind, but this is pretty much the blueprint for what I will run. Keeping it simple, we'll get a little bit more technical in a moment, but keeping it simple, this is a bit of the secret sauce. Material on low, texture on low, detail on low, UI on medium, a vignette off, V-Sync off, distortion off, shadows off. These are the main settings. Pretty much run everything off or low and UI quality on medium for starters. Next up, we're going to talk about a little bit more of the secret sauce. Now, if you like a super sharp image, then I would recommend having improved clarity on and experimental sharpening on as well with no anti-aliasing and 4x filtering. Now, if you don't like the sharp image, then this is what the settings I would typically recommend for you. And this is how I like to play as well. 
For a smoother and nicer experience, enable 2x MSAA anti-aliasing with the 4x filtering, but disable clarity and sharpening. Next thing is Bloom. Bloom can be turned on. It doesn't have any noticeable effect on FPS, at least for me when I was trying it. It does make lighting a lot brighter. But something I would say is that if you have a lot of saturation or increased vibrancy, like you've done through Windows or in your monitor settings, it can be a little bit overwhelming and a little bit distracting. So I prefer not to use it if I've cranked out those things like I have in Control Panel, for example. Now, what I will say is that if you weren't running these settings before, then I can guarantee you're gonna see some sort of improvement in the FPS number, but also mainly in the general feel of the gameplay. It should feel a lot smoother if you use higher graphic settings like in the past it might look a little bit strange at first getting used to this sort of setup but it is the optimal one for visibility and fps make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video let me know down in the comments what you thought about it if you found any of these tips useful whatsoever and i will catch you in the next video